what does a brain sound like? You know, a brain does not actually make a sound, but somehow we could use audio to represent its activity. So today, I will use an electroencephalogram to generate some audio. An EEG is recorded by tiny electrodes attached to the skull. An EEG measures the electrical activity in the brain, which can play a role in diagnosing brain diseases. So today, I will use an open source dataset to demonstrate some sonification techniques of EEG. As the graph shows, the dataset is recorded by 37 electrodes, which means it has 37 channels. And I will use the channel at the very top of the head, namely this channel. So how are we going to do it? The simplest way is to directly interpret the brain waves as sound waves and then play it on a speaker, right? But that's not very effective because EEGs are mainly in the frequency range of 0 to 30 hertz, which is difficult for the human ear to hear. Indeed, we could compress it into a higher frequency, but that would make the algorithm not real time. Another way to do it is to match the instantaneous voltage of the EEG to the frequency of a beep. Namely, the higher the voltage, the sharper the beep, right? And here, I will show the effect of this algorithm. Did you hear that? OK, so the sound was confusing because the EEG voltage changes very fast and irregularly, making the sound fairly informative. So another way of sonification is to match some components of the EEG to some artificially specified parameters of the sound. For example, some researchers used to match the energy of the EEG's alphabet to the sound's intensity. The alpha band is the component in the frequency range of 8 to 12 hertz. So the higher its energy, the louder it sounds. So here, I'm going to match the four bands of the signal to different frequencies. I would apply Fourier transform to the short periods of the signal to compute the energy. And you would hear four different tones with varying intensities and see the instantaneous energy of the four bands. So how does it feel? This audio is somehow more informative than the voltage match, right? And if we want to play it more, we could even add a little artistic effect to them. We could have the sound on a musical scale and decide which tone to play by which band has the highest energy. And we could also make the tone sound like a real musical instrument. For example, we could use the carpless drum algorithm which is invented in 1983 to simulate plugging a string. Um, before we go further, can I show you the original data of this channel? Um, look at the graph. What's the problem? So the whole waveform is slowly moving up, right? And that's called a baseline drift. It's considered a common noise in the EEG. So we need to remove this noise with a high pass filter because the baseline drift has a very low frequency. And this is the graph with the noise removed. And the, the first few jumps are due to that we fed the beginning signal into the filter. And this phenomenon is called the transient response of the filter. And there's nothing we can do about it. But fortunately, the transient response will decay to zero in a short time. So no need to worry about it. 
So here, I'm going to match the band's energy to the pentatonic scale, which is do, re, mi, sol, la. And it's a classic musical scale in my culture. So if the delta band has the highest energy, the speaker would play do, right? And I'm also going to cheat a little bit because the energy of this EEG is concentrated in the low frequency. And to ensure the appearance of the last few tones, I would multiply their corresponding energy by some gains. And, you know, to make the tone real, I would use the carplus drawn algorithm I mentioned. So let's see what we got. So that's it. And the bar chart has been meaningless because of my cheating process. But the last algorithm is just for fun. And I believe that there are already many people that produce more reasonable music from EEG with a better design. Thank you.